The organs of the female reproductive system include the ovaries, which are the female gonads. We'll be looking inside of each ovary where we'll find the ovarian follicles. Ovarian follicles are containers where the oocyte develops, or the egg. The ovary is also the site of production of estrogens, progesterone, relaxin, and inhibin. The female reproductive organs also include the fallopian tubes, also known as the uterine tubes. Uh, these form a passageway that transports the oocyte from the ovary towards the uterus. It is also serves as a transport site for the sperm to reach the oocyte within the fallopian tube. So the egg will be released, or the oocyte will be released during ovulation, collected into the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube has small little finger-like processes which help to sweep the oocyte into the fallopian tube. As the oocyte travels down the fallopian tube, sperm could be traveling from the uterus towards that oocyte. Therefore, the fallopian tube serves as the site of fertilization. It also serves as the location for early embryonic development. So before that embryo enters the uterus, it develops for many days in the fallopian tube. The uterus is, is a, a muscular organ. It contains a layer of smooth muscle. Uh, it houses the developing offspring, so this is where most of the embryonic and fetal development is going to occur. The uterus has three layers. The inside layer is known as the endometrium. The muscular layer is the myometrium, and the outer layer is the perimetrium. This drawing shows the normal position of the uterus. Above the urinary bladder, slightly behind the urinary bladder, but it curves forward over top of the urinary bladder. We call this normal position antiflexion. The vagina serves as a receptacle for semen. Uh, as you recall, semen needs to be an alkaline pH in order to neutralize the acidity of the vagina. It also serves as the last portion of the birth canal. Finally, the external organs, collectively called the vulva, include the mons pubis, which is a layer of adipose tissue anterior to the pubic symphysis. This is the pubic symphysis, which joins the two hip bones anteriorly. The clitoris, and the labia majora, and the labia minora. So those collectively form the female vulva. This is another picture showing the position of these female organs. You'll notice we are above looking down, and you see the urinary bladder sitting posterior yet flexing over the urinary bladder is the uterus. On each side of the uterus are the two ovaries, and positioned close to the ovary are the fallopian tubes or uterine tubes. You'll also notice many of the GI organs we've learned in the past, uh, like the ileum of the small intestine, the cecum. Uh, off the cecum is the appendix, so you'll notice that appendix is actually positioned very close to the right ovary. You'll also notice many ligaments. Uh, positioning is important for these organs. Stability is important for these organs. Uh, the major ligaments include the round ligaments, which come from the anterior wall and attach to the uterus. The ovarian ligament, which attaches the ovary to the uterus. There are suspensory ligaments, 
which position the ovary and the fallopian tube properly. There's also what's known as the broad ligament. The broad ligament is actually the bottom of the peritoneum, which kind of fills in a lot of this, this area. It's a very wide ligament, so it's known as the broad ligament. But you'll even notice a few other ligaments, which are kind of difficult to identify here, but there's cardinal ligaments, uterosacral ligaments, um, all kind of holding the female reproductive organs in place. Here's a drawing of the female mammary glands, which are also part of the female reproductive system. Uh, they are obviously the site of milk production. And there's three hormones we need to keep straight when it comes to mammary glands and milk production and ejection. Estrogen from the ovary is going to stimulate the development of the glandular tissue. And this occurs beginning at puberty. Prolactin from the anterior pituitary gland stimulates milk production. And this is obviously only going to occur during pregnancy and after pregnancy. And then finally, oxytocin, which is produced by your hypothalamus, secreted by the posterior pituitary, stimulates milk ejection, which we call letdown. And that is in response to suckling of the baby. Here's a posterior view of these organs. Again, uh, we see the, the uterus, and it's three layers, endo, myo, and perimetrium. Notice this furthest upper rounded portion, furthest from the opening, is known as the fundus of the uterus, whereas the opening, the external os, is found in the cervix of the uterus. So this is the cervix. We see that broad ligament, that very wide ligament here. Uh, we see very easily the ovarian ligament attaching the ovary to the uterus, the fallopian tube with its fimbriae. Uh, there's a region of the fallopian tube called the infundibulum, which is going to transport that oocyte and sperm and eventually embryo into the uterus. So this is just giving you a little more uh, of the anatomy. Uh, the vagina is located here. Uh, where sperm can travel in order to get into the uterus and eventually the fallopian tube. This is a frontal plane through an ovary. And an ovary we typically can divide into the medulla, the inside of the ovary, which basically just has you know some blood vessels and other tissue. The cortex is where you find the follicles, the ovarian follicles, of different stages of follicular development. So follicular development is this slow maturation of the container that houses the developing oocyte. The very early stage are known as primordial follicles. The primordial follicles are all loaded in the ovary before birth of a female. At birth, there's about 200,000 to 2 million uh, primary oocytes within the ovary, and they are found in these primordial follicles. The primordial follicles don't mature until puberty. So during childhood, the female ovary is still just con loaded with these early, early stage primordial follicles. But at puberty, they begin their maturation process. And they will slowly mature, and obviously not all of them, but many of them will begin maturation into a primary follicle, then a secondary follicle. Secondary follicle, you'll notice some fluid beginning to accumulate inside the follicle. Notice the largest cell inside that follicle is the developing oocyte. There are some other cells in that follicle. There are follicular cells and cells referred to as granulosa cells. Uh, these granulosa cells help nourish and protect the oocyte. They also secrete estrogens as the follicle grows larger. 
one follicle per cycle will eventually become what's known as the graphian or mature follicle. That's the follicle that will ovulate that cycle. And we'll get into more of this cycle as we progress through the, the female reproductive cycle. But that graphian mature follicle is going to eventually rupture in response to luteinizing hormone. And that's going to cause the ovulation or discharge of the secondary oocyte surrounded by many of these granulosa cells known as the corona radiata. Once ovulation occurs, the empty follicle continues to develop into what's known as the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is a very important structure after ovulation. It continues to produce hormones. It produces estrogen. It produces progesterone. It produces a hormone known as relaxin and a fourth hormone called inhibin. And this occurs after ovulation until the system either finds out pregnancy occurred or it finds out that pregnancy is not going to occur. And if fertilization did not occur, the corpus luteum begins to degenerate. And finally, it becomes a structure known as the corpus albicans. That structure is now a non-functional structure. And it's basically like a little scar, but it no longer produces large amounts of hormones. So when I refer to follicular development, this is what we mean. It's this maturation of follicles through these different step, steps or stages until eventually the follicle degenerates and becomes a little scar. Next video, we'll look at the process of meiosis inside of the ovary, which we call oogenesis.